Hello everyone. Today again we'll be discussing a case of uh, root canal treatment on this premolar. So uh, as you can see, this is the premolar which presented with a proximal defect. We'll be first discussing the challenges we are going to face in this case. So as you can see, there is a proximal defect which looks below the level of gingiva. I would like to point out another factor here that is the adjacent premolar which is grossly decayed and has ragged and sharp edges. This ragged and sharp edges will pose a difficulty in proper isolation of the case and we will see how. This is the occlusal surface and this is the occlusal view how it looks. So, after giving anesthesia in private block and a greater palatine block, we went ahead with Kerry's excavation. And after Kerry's excavation, we also did some gingivectomy so as to access the proper clean tooth margin. Furthermore, as I mentioned earlier, the ragged and sharp edges of the adjacent grossly decayed premolar will pose a difficulty in proper isolation because it may tear the rubber dam. So the, to prevent that, we just took a round burr or a straight burr and removed or softened all the sharp edges. Right, we made it equation level in a such a manner that our rubber dam won't be teared. And that is how we went ahead with our isolation. I, at this point, I would like to draw your attention that if whenever it is possible, try to isolate more than one tooth while doing endorestorative procedures. You can see, I will be working on this premolar, but I have placed my clamp one tooth behind the premolar that is on the molar. And as this tooth was carious, we skipped this tooth and placed our rubber dam on the canine. So, Doing this or isolating more than one tooth or isolating the whole arch where you are working on will help you in proper access, will help you in proper retraction. Access of tooth isolation or multiple tooth isolation will create enough retraction of lip, enough retraction of tongue in case of mandible, thereby providing you a proper clean field to work with. You can see the Achilles excavation is going on still more. The next slide, I'll be talking about matrix. Now, as you have noticed earlier, the adjacent tooth was missing or creased or grossly decayed. So we did not have a classical presentation where we use any wedge, any matrix, and then place a wedge. We cannot place a wedge because there is tooth is absent. So we have certain options here. Either we can use a regular topple mirror or we can use something called matrix in matrix. So in this case, I have used matrix in matrix technique. You can see there is a matrix which is engaged on uh, with the help of the contact point at the distal side and that matrix will kind of support the inner matrix. As you can see here, the outer matrix is engaged in the contact point area. The inner matrix is placed to adapt to the tooth margin and Teflon is stuffed between the two matrices. Teflon is stuffed in between two matrices so as to give a proper tight adaptation here on the proximal side. And after proper uh, acid etching caries excavation, we went ahead with our pre endodontic buildup. Pre endodontic buildup is essential for two reasons. First, it will help as a reservoir while you are doing reservoir for sodium hypochlorite while you are doing your endodontic treatment. Furthermore, if you are not able to finish your endodontic treatment in a single appointment, the retention of the temporary filling which is much better if you have all the four walls present. Right? So, pre-endodontic buildup is nothing but building up the missing wall or the decayed wall with composite or other restorative material. I always prefer composite, it is convenient for me. When you have four walls, right, you can have a proper 
cavity or the chamber which will hold on to the sodium hypochlorite while you are doing your PMP. It will also help you to retain your temporary filling right while the patient is away and you are waiting for the next appointment. So here we completed our endodontic treatment, exosoaking was done and you can see the canal orifice, the red dot here. Pre endodontic buildup is done here with composite. And then we went ahead with our regular BMP technique. This is the radiograph showing how pre endodontic buildup was done. This is not an ascent, uh, like sometimes I take this radiograph, sometimes I don't, right? But this radiograph provides an important information regarding your matrix adaptation. If your composite or if your restorative material is in line with the tooth, that means there is no overhang. It is suggestive that your technique with your matrix was proper. And then we exposed working length radiograph with a file inside the canal. And once the working length was established, we prepared both the canals and after proper thorough irrigation, we will be talking about this irrigation in upcoming videos. So at the moment we will just say that these three canals were cleaned thoroughly and uh, they were irrigated thoroughly which was followed by obturation. Now here at, at this point I would like to draw your attention towards the pulp chamber which is not so clean in this picture. That is what exactly I want to talk about. If you are using a bonded restorative material for post endodontic restoration, for example composite, it is very much essential that your pulp chamber should be clean. Try to cut the gutta percha at the level of orifice or maybe 1 or 2 mm below the level of orifice. Once you have removed the gutta percha from the pulp chamber, clean the pulp chamber thoroughly. Now there are various methods where which you can use to clean excess of sealer and gutta percha. One of which is sandblasting. Other than sandblasting you can use certain medicaments for example you can use EDTA gel or citric acid gel right. Just place few drops over here use your probe agitate and then rinse off with water. This citric acid or EDTA gel will dissolve all the debris and excess of sealer and you will rinse it off. Once that is done, you can use your acid etch and again acid etch will do two things. It will, it will etch the tooth surface. Furthermore, it will also dissolve any leftover remnant debris which will make tooth furthermore clean. We are cleaning, we want clean chamber so as to have a proper bonding. We, the root canal does not end at proper obturation, right? Once the things we have cleaned, the things we have obturated should be preserved. And how they will be preserved? Let's say let's say if someone does a poor filling here the filling or the restoration post endodontic restoration is poor what does it suggest it suggests that there will be leakage of saliva there will be leakage of uh, food particles etc because of poor restoration and this leakage over a period of time can result in failure of root canal so our duty does not end at the obturation but to preserve that obturation with a proper post endodontic restoration here a proper post endodontic restoration was done with a composite material and this is the side view. Hope you enjoyed, uh, we will be coming ahead with further more cases. Thank you.